Whoa. Eating clean. People can't eat just real food. People can't eat real food every day. That's just impractical. You can't expect real people to eat real food every day. speak of you speak with forked tongue you demon you you witch it's impossible for people real people to eat real food as their primary fuel source it's impossible you can't eat real food it's not sustainable you have to live a little I mean, you, you have to have treats and, and like be a normal person, right? I mean, you can't deprive yourself of all of the synthetic chemicals that are being sold to you. You can't deprive yourself of all the processed foods that have been stripped down and severely grotesquely altered and rebuilt in the manner to look and taste just like the real food that they represent. But eating real food, well, that's not sustainable. You can't expect real people to eat real food. They will have you believe. And they will tell you, they will explain to you, and they will shout people down who say, why not just... I don't know, eat an apple instead of a go bar or whatever the fucking go, go, you know, neon synthetic bar or whatever, whatever it, it is. So this construct from the, 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 the political sphere, we talk in terms of constructs, but there's constructs in the nutrition and the health and the fitness world also. And these constructs are typically, like those in politics, created and controlled by the least intelligent and the least empathetic, sympathetic, altruistic, philanthropic, morally, properly, rightly intended, ethical. These constructs aren't, aren't created by those types, typically. Not, not these extreme constructs. They're created by, they're just part of narratives that are meant to sell widgets in whatever the category. So you pull back, you see exactly what it is. So those coaches, those trainers, those, those nutrition experts, those, those, you know, fitness, you know, icons who say you can't eat real food. You can't expect yourself to eat real food. It's not sustainable to eat real food. Well, they're lying to you. They're lying to you. They're intentionally lying to you, or they are too stupid to give you advice in anything, in anything. I would not cross the street standing next to that person. I would not take anything they have to say as, as any way to lead my life. Because the concept of, of eating real food, the same food that have sustained, that has sustained the entire species since the dawn of time, that somewhere along the way, someone actually thought they could convince one person, let alone a global population, that in order to be healthy and feel better and be properly, adequately fooled, you need to stop eating the real food or, or you can replace a big bulk of the real food with synthetic food made to look like the real food. Just much cheaper, much less expensive, not for you as much, the, the consumer, the end user, but for the companies to produce. That's all it is. I mean, really pulled back 30,000, you know, 80,000 view of this concept. That's all it is. So for you guys, the takeaway is to pull down into the minutia, the micro, the granular, live in the granular, and just think from that perspective. Real foods have sustained all life on this planet since the dawn of time. Earth-grown foods, earth-grown nutrition, earth-grown nutrition have, has sustained all of life on this planet since the dawn of time. 
I mean, until like a couple hundred years ago in our current consumption, you know, exposure um, realm, of course, you know, the certain forms of farming and uh, processing, if you will, um, extends far back, far, much farther back than our current civilization. But just go and eat that, just start there, just eat that. You know, the, the common way that, that food, the processed food, food, synthetic foods, I'm talking about synthetics. So when you look at the synthetic foods that have cropped up over the last hundred or so years, if you just cut out the synthetic versions of the real foods and you just continue eating all of the real foods with like, you know, the, the, the industrial processes of, of maybe 120 years or so ago the turn of the century or so, um, and then dig back even deeper, depending on what your indigenous area, we have a global population here. So it depends on what parts of the world you're in other parts of the world, for sure. The uh, farming goes back much, much deeper, thousands of years. Here I'm, I'm sitting in the, uh, the Western um, hemisphere, right? North America, United States, Nevada, Las Vegas, as you drill down deeper into the, the Google GPS of where I am, data location enabled. Um, so think about that, guys and girls, really. I mean, that's that's the thing. And they'll have you believe that eating 100 calorie snack packs and processed protein bars with with that are purple or blue or red and they're like raspberry colada flavored and you look at the ingredients you're like holy shit there's like 0.8 percent of actually real food ingredients and the rest is synthetic i mean from organic not organic like usda certified organic organic of actual like uh earth grown matter un unprocessed earth grown matter because every time i talk this subject you get these assholes out there that are like well dolce oats are processed yeah, so that's why I tend to talk more on the synthetics. Now we talk about the synthetics and then the, the, the minimal, minimal, minimal processing, not, not processing even for mass consumption, just processing for safety and um, consumability. That's that where we talk about processing, approved processing. That's all it is. It's processing for safety. Um, you know, don't go and eat a dead rat roadkill without cooking it first. So that's a form of processing, right? So you have to have little safety rules built in there, but not the mass airtight packing, producing neon coloring, red number, whatever, dying 18 month shelf life preserving. Um, that's not what it, that completely is, is off the list. So I hope that helps. I hope this little video helps. Let me answer some of the YouTube community's questions right now. Mr. Russ, what's up, Russ? You in the air, my man, Adam Alexander. Clickbait is clickbait. You got me. You got me. Well, hopefully, hopefully, I mean, we got a good audience right now. So hopefully this made sense to you guys. And people need to hear this. If you know somebody who needs to hear this, that you know all the synthetics, just play it for them. You know, hopefully, I don't know. Ho hopefully they get it. If not, that's their issue. But you guys get it. And then we'll just start with you. Start with you. You live your life accordingly. Watch how many people gravitate towards your habits, to your philosophies, to your approaches. They listen. They lean forward when you talk. And then they can implement your opinions, your theories, essentially, is all it is. My theories is what I'm, you know, uploading to you guys every day. And then you guys have to test it on your own. But based upon up until this point in my life, my career, my experiences, everything I give you is the most honest, accurate, up-to-date, actionable data possible. Oh, that's you have it on the cutting edge right here, right now. So take it or leave it, but there it is. Kent, hello, Kent. Joseph C. Mahe Dolce, how many milligrams of caffeine is a safe and healthy limit per day? Thanks, uh, Joseph. That is dependent upon the individual. Um, and I would have to say lesser is more for most. Um, but some of us have built up high thresholds, which I do. You know, I'm, a, I'm an avid coffee drinker. Look at this. This is an iced Americano. And that is my double shot. So that's four shots right there. And I had two shots early this morning. Dropped Mr. Mursad Bektik off at the airport at 7 a.m. So we got some espresso on the, on the drive out. So that'll be a six espresso day for me. And, and a little like, you know, four ounces of black coffee sipping at the house. What's optimal, again, it depends upon, depends on the individual and then optimal time. Is it every, every day, every day, every day, you know, pushing the pace like that. Um, some people don't tolerate caffeine very well. They talk a little bit more on caffeine. And so it's, it's 
individual um, dependent. All caffeine or all stimulant consumption should be under the supervision of a doctor. I think that's important because some people, if you're not getting your constant blood work done, if you're not going to see your doctor for your wellness checkups, if you're not doing that, you might have some sort of little, you know, body issue, health issue or cardiac issue where maybe you're not a good candidate for caffeine and what, oh, wait, what's my family history? Boom, boom Uncle Joey and, and, you know, father so-and-so and grandpa, you know, whatever. Well, shit, they all had these common traits also. This is, this is also hopefully the actual education that we offer you guys. Now, if you have this relationship for your doctor, then it's easier to determine a powerful stimulant like caffeine that has amazing benefits for some people, has very, very dangerous effects for other people. And that's the way I typically answer these general questions. Now, if you work one-on-one -on -one with myself or one of our dietitians or whoever else is in your world that's, that's licensed and qualified, then the conversation can be drilled down specifically into you, even with me. I mean, that's why I have a higher caffeine intake, but shit, I'm, I'm way, 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 way on top of my health and fitness. And I'm you know, always, always diligent. And I even do phases in and out. You know, I went through that like, month of April, no, no coffee at all. I drank teas. I enjoyed the teas, but it was just no coffee, not because of a caffeine issue, just because I like to exert self-control from time to time. It makes me happy. Joey Montalvo. Good day, Mike. Doing my morning fasted list, low intensity, steady state, cardiovascular activity, about three miles. Do you think it's good or bad to wait to eat about an hour or two, or should you eat right away? Thank you for all that you do. Um, Joey, I, I do something very similar. I, you know, during my phases, I get up and do my hour of list, low intensity, steady state, cardiovascular activity fasted, which is in the absence of insulin, which there's the science shows different scientific studies and philosophies, but I, I believe it to be true. And anecdotal evidence supports this, that fasted cardio seems to be more effective or more efficient in the utilization of this more stubborn stored body fat, gender specific body fat in, in many categories, many people. So we, that's why we like to do our lists cardio fasted. But afterwards, when I get back to the house and mo house and most of our clients, we suggest like start eating naturally. Usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll walk back in, I'll click on the kettle. I'll go upstairs. Maybe I'll need to shower if I'm a little sweaty, depending on the temperature, put on fresh clothes or something, put on my robe, uh, robe and slippers. Now I'll make my way down. I'll just, I'll, I'll get to the business of making breakfast and I'll just go through my day. I'm hydrating the whole time. So there's probably, you know, anywhere between five to 20 minutes between the time I walk in the door after my hour of lists and when I'm actually eating. So it, it's a pretty quick turnaround because I've been awake for an hour plus hour and a half. So now it's almost a two hour fasted window fasted window, excuse me, with low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity. So, I mean, we've already, we're already out the gate working. We're running, we're ahead of, of health uh, metrics on, on almost every one of our peers, even those who train in, in the higher glycolytic activities later on in the day while fueled, fueled and, and pre-worked out and at workout and, and all that shit. I'm talking fast right now, but trying to get this, this out there. So those of you that that makes sense to, I, I, I hope you appreciate and utilize that. The venison is what's real tonight. The W. Ooh, la, la. That's what's up. Chris Didding. Hey, coach. Look forward to meeting you next week. So exciting. Love, loving the live videos. Chris, I appreciate that. Chris is coming out to our DDC, our Dolce Diet Certification and Nutrition Conference here in Las Vegas during International Fight Week at the world famous Dolce Diet and Fitness Center. It's going to be myself proctored by primarily proctored by our lead dietitian miss meg 40 m s r d l r d d d c meg is an absolute genius in the game uh, and she will be speaking very directly deep down a full college level course on nutrition and dietetics we also break up with myself multiple speakers in other categories from the the, the branding side the social media side building your business motivational interviewing communicating with one person or a wide variety of people goal setting how to really build the life that you deserve, allowing yourself to help other people build their lives alongside of you. Um, it's, it's an amazing three days here in Las Vegas. So, uh, Chris, I hope you're pumped up. I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go. I can't wait to see you guys and, and get after it this weekend. I think we have two spots left. If anybody cares to come out, I mean, now, now's your time. Now's your time. Um, Dolce.shop.com. Um, they might even be sold out by now, but check it out and see if it's still up. Mr. Russ on day three of three weeks to shred it and down 5.4 pounds. Mr. Russ, three days in, 5.4 pounds down following three weeks to shred it. The most successful, healthy weight loss program ever devised as proven by the world's greatest athletes. Three weeks to shred it. It was designed to lose up to 21 pounds in 21 days while getting ready for weight class oriented combat sports, primarily the world of the UFC. 
Um, we've worked with more UFC athletes at a higher level with a higher, higher level with a greatest, greater level of success than any other coach in our niche in, in the weight management nutrition industry. And we say that very proudly because we offer that same IP, the intellectual property that supports the online version of three weeks to shredded at the Dolce diet.com. It's the same algorithm. It's all the same data that we've collected and perfected over, you know, 25, 30 plus years working hand on um, with athletes. Um, when I started as a, a freshman varsity wrestler, my freshman year, um, varsity captain, four year varsity captain, four year varsity wrestler. Um, from that point on, I was I was a team captain. I was leading my athletes, leading my teammates, uh, leading these wrestlers. And I already was in study and, and pursuit of, of health and fitness and already cutting weight at that stage, that early stage. So I've been doing that now. Um, that's 29 years, 13. I'm 42 right now. So shit, 29 years. I've been doing focus, focus, focused on this, applying the craft at the highest level. So all the data I've, I've collected since then, and I have my notebooks from back then. I have the workouts that we were doing and the foods that we were eating and how many times I would have to spit into a cup in order to be, you know, 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So much data. And one day, eventually, I'll probably release um, maybe a, a meta-analysis on the data that we've collected um, or maybe just highlighted individual stories that allowed us to leap to really kind of leap from where everybody else was, we, we just leaped onto another continent. Um, you know, so cool stuff, cool stuff. I, I think you guys will appreciate that. Um, but that's, that's the three weeks of shredded program at the Dolce .com. It's cool to just see the, the, the depth of the content. The most people, the most people who talk about it, they don't even understand it. They don't even understand what we're doing with the underpinnings behind what we do. And imagine studying something for 29 years like intensely for 29 years but having the world's greatest athletes as your test subjects as your petri dish that you can record every measurable data point possible and collect and aggregate that and put them all side by side and then you can really step back and see what works what doesn't that's what we do that's what we've been doing and then have the blessing of some of the greatest academic minds classically trained academics working as members of our team either full-time employees um 1099 consultants um just outside you know run and gun gunslingers um creating and, and producing content analyzing content for us um i don't know we uh that's probably 10 years off though that, that you guys will hear about all that data i'm paul koloff i'm doing great david boydeen the skinny stir fry with fiddleheads divine um fiddleheads divine i don't know what that means mr russ been saving so much money shopping at the farmer's market and working on getting the girlfriend to stop with the keto crap just she'll follow along my friend she will follow along. just do what you do just do what you do man seize the day you can't say such nasty stuff how dare you um gotta block you man can't be saying such stuff boom jesus Papa D, is that Rhonda on your shirt? I'm having a hard time losing more than 15 pounds on the Dolce principles, and I know that I have at least 50 more. Thoughts? Thank you. Um, Johan, it, it really depends where you're starting and what you're doing, what program are you on right now. You're 15 pounds down. 15 pounds down is a great start. It's a great jump start. And if the goal is to be down 50 or 50 more, then we look at it over a 12-month period of time. Look at it as a year-long process to rebuild your body. So the first 15 pounds, 15, 10, 15, 20 pounds in the first phase of a diet, man, nutrition program, lifestyle change, amazing high five motivation right there. From that point, we continue on and hopefully we're starting to rebuild some lean body mass. So now if you put on half a pound of lean muscle tissue and you lose a pound of body fat, the scale only shows, shows that you've lost half a pound, but really you've lost one pound of body fat and gained a half a pound of lean muscle tissue. I only say that because many people inside our program will start to see that because of the, the, the dense micronutrition that we offer through our programs, allowing more raw materials for the body to start rebuilding itself, even just simple things, bone density and collagen production, thickening of hair and, you know, simple things like that. And that, that certainly does add up. But also, if you're following our training program, the style of training that we use is meant to train you like an athlete to be very healthy, very physical, very short, very capable body weight um, oriented, but still using multi joint compound movements. Um, and that will have some change. I give you just a greater picture. So don't know how long you are on and, and what if you're a part of the online program just send us an email to support at the dolce diet.com or just inside your dashboard just click on the contact tab and feel free to ask the team any questions 
We have our customer service. We have our registered dietitians. We have certified trainers. We have our tech side. You don't really talk to the tech people. Customer support um, kicks it to the tech people. Um, and we get all of your questions answered. So every question that comes through, you get deep, in-depth answers as, as deep as you need it to be. Seth, I think we need to get a huge compound in Texas. Raise and grow your own food. I'm in each Vera. Hey, Mike, is it true that your body can only take in 30 grams of protein at a time? Or is that outdated bro science? I think it's close because your body can only take in so much X. So your body can only consume X. Now, my body can consume X and your can consume X plus one or X plus 20 or X plus whatever. So you have your own X. Your X is my Y. But we all have our own individual X's. And I think the type of protein matters. I think the digestibility of the, the protein matters. I, I think the, 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 the quality, the quantity, what also is being digested alongside the protein matters. So what you're saying, the 30 grams, it, it's, 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 we can't give you a complete answer because it's a very, very slim question, but it's a very common question. What we typically do is we look at the 20 to 40 range for the average person about 20 to 40 times. And what we try and do is, is and this is where we have a little bit of, of issue with those, the extreme um, time-restricted eaters and fasters. What they do, unfortunately, is they cut their feeding windows so short to four, six hours, two to six hours, depending on some. Some are just one meal, some are two meals. Some are a smoothie and one food meal. Some, uh, you know, it, it just gets a little crazy. But what happens, unfortunately, is then they try and put a whole entire day's worth of nutrition, micronutrition, macronutrition, all into the digestive system at one time. And it's very difficult to break down and absorb. So now, even if it's 110 grams of protein that they need per day, and they throw in 130 grams of protein and, and 240 grams of carbohydrate and another, you know, 80 or 90 grams of, of, of fat. And, and I don't even know the numbers, you know, could even be even higher than that. It's difficult for the body to break all that down adequately, efficiently to utilize, absorb that it's, it's difficult. And there will be things lost in transa translation for sure. There will be inefficiencies. And just keeping that in mind allows us to understand that we should spread our meals. It makes more sense to spread our meals. I'm not saying it has to be six, eight meals a day, but you know, typically three to six meals a day works really well for the average person, four meals or, and meals is a feeding session. I mean, shit, I don't even really care if it's a stick of bubble gum or if it's a prime rib, we have feeding sessions, right? So you have your feeding sessions. So of what you're feeding, what are, you know, how does that relate to each other? And then size and digestibility to make sure you're, you're getting your full allotment. Um, Hot Dog says, by the way, I love what you're, uh, for amateur boxers will improve my skills hitting a heavy bag every day. Um, yeah, of course. I, I don't know any even halfway good boxer that doesn't put in the fucking work on the heavy bag. Um, and that is up to you. Some some athletes, it's it's almost every boxer I know, it's a minimum of three, like three shadow three, three heavy bag, three, you know, footwork, um, you know, mitts, loose up, whatever that it's always like, you know, you start and finish on, on the bags and pads and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, but not, not primarily cause you need moving targets. If you're trying to be in combat, Victor Vitor. Hey Mike, what's up? I want to know your opinion on roasted peanuts. Are they healthy or not roasted peanuts? So what is the data that says they're not healthy? Now, how are we roasting them? We have our own roasted nut recipe in which you take whatever, you know, nut, almond or peanut that you're going to be eating. And you just kind of slightly warm that on the skillet. And you just kind of roll them around. So it's kind of like a roasted nut, um, but it's at a very low heat threshold. So I don't know what the opposing data is if there is any so let me know when given the option to train but only get six hours of sleep is it better to skip the training session and get enough sleep instead yes yes um dolce what is your biggest squat dolce well now i've, I've changed my my goal from absolute squat numbers of which i had very many big ones i was squatting over 500 pounds in high school and over 600 pounds before i turned 20 um, and I, I pay the price today in many ways, my hips, primarily my, my kind of Jenga back and upper back, um, heavy, 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 heavy loads. Whoa. That don't say that Dolce. <laughs> don't say that. Um, heavy rods. No, don't say that. Don't say that. But barbells, heavy barbells man, on, my, on my back, you know, and in my hands, even poles. So now a lot of what I do is 
I squat, I squat and lunge almost every day, every workout in some ways. I'm very, you know, specific in the types and styles and biomechanics of when I do squatting work. The type of squatting I do is a little more unconventional style work where we have 150 pound, 18 inch medicine balls, Kevlar medicine balls here. Yeah, medicine ball, there's a bag here. And, you know, kind of gavel grip, bear hugging that and hitting in sets of squats. That That's more preferred to me right now. Still loading the loading the spine um, without the, the, the compression, the severe compression. And you can actually, you know, hold the weight more with the muscles because you, know, you do a little bit of isometric so it becomes this whole full body thing so i'm actually able to stay much tighter much lower level of risk i'm not crushing and misaligning the spine i'm actually strengthening stabilizing the spine during the entire movement um so things like that kettlebell squats you know as heavy as we can go i got the 44s 44 kgs um so i'll bang out goblet squats or you know i don't even know what the kettlebell people call them but holding two of those i love those and i'll usually do those um uh but, but, but two of these i'll do lunges rear lunges with those i don't like walking lunges i you with those i like walking lunges with the, the med balls we do those quite a bit rear lunges with the kettlebells um so that those are my squatting motions to answer your question um 91 J joe what's the best type of list to do i'm going to try it instead of hit just walking just walk around your neighborhood just walk, walk around the block, go for a nice scenic walk, go 30 minutes in one direction, turn around, come home. That's the best way. Mr. Russ, any suggestions for getting children to eat vegetables like a four-year-old? Make them a part of the process. We bring our kids to the grocery store and we let them choose their vegetables. And then we let them like wash it and peel it and kind of make it and make it for the family. So we turn it into this this whole process, this experience, and we give them ownership of it, ownership of the, 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 the choosing of the vegetable, the washing, the cleaning, the cooking, all that stuff like the, the cutting and, and plating and, and preparing. So we give them the gift of giving meals and kind of that exchange of love and activity. Um, we try and teach them and their kids, right? You're not, you know, peel the potatoes, but we make them a part of the process. So they have aware an awareness of food and flavor and even the cultural part of it. Um, and what they hear is always positive reinforcement of good food sources. And I wouldn't not negative reinforcement on bad food sources, just completely disregarded. You know, it's, it's not, I mean, we don't have candy conversations. We just know what's good. What makes us feel good. What feels good in our tummy. You know, that that's the food that we talk about and that's what they intuitively are drawn to. So our kids for what it's, we're not vegan hippies, right? I'm more like, you know, meathead brandy, like a, a, a Barbie doll. Um, trying to get that girl camping, you know, it's like uh, Beverly Hills uh, Girl Scouts or the Shelley Long film. Um, but what you you want to do is make sure that your kids have see good things in the food and it's not forced on them. It's just like it, it's 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 a gift almost. It's it's a, it's a benefit. So it's, it's ch changing the, the, the psychological paradigm of families and of cultures of what food is. So th this is a bigger question. I, I can't just give you one recipe, though we have great recipes. Our blueberry madness recipe is awesome. Um, our, our pastas and, and chilies and our pit bull pancakes and um, our breakfast bowls. Kids, I don't know one kid who doesn't love the breakfast bowl. So and I know you're talking more about, you know, produce and veggies and such. So with that, there's great ways to cook and make those that kids will in, enjoy, but make them a part of the process. And then also you, you guys, the parents have to eat and love eating vegetables, real vegetables too. You know, let's try and not get them in, in bags and cans. Let's actually try and get real vegetables that are dirty. You got to wash them because they were just in the dirt. You know, that's, that's, that's just another uh, suggestion that we, we try and put forth. Jace, any advice for someone that realizes their goal is impossible to achieve? My goal is to find a function the black pack can't serve. And after eight months, no such function can be found. Jay's that's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate that. The black pack, that is the most fucking amazing backpack I've ever had. Mursad just left here, Bektik, with a black pack himself. He actually left the backpack he came with because I was like, hey, man, got a black pack for you. He was like, oh, he's like, what? How does it fit? Let me just that, 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 that. So this morning, I didn't even realize, notice, I go up to his room. And his old backpacks there, just dead on the floor. He just he put a bullet in it. Um, it was a Reebok backpack, I must say, and I replaced it with the black pack just because it's got everything fit all this stuff. Plus, he's got four meals in there now. He's got everything he needs. Um, 
Awesome. And how about Mursad Bektik? Mursad Bektik, the number seven UFC featherweight on the planet and longtime Dolce athlete since he was fighting in the middle of the country for $400 even. I don't even think he got paid for the first one. But anyway, comes and stays with us. Uncle Mursad, as the girls calls him, Uncle Mursad. Uh, amazing couple days together. Just family. Family life, family life. We swung by the PI, which is nice UFC PI. Um, Heather Linden, amazing job. Duncan French uh, got Mursad hooked up, getting some some new um, benchmarks created for him just for data, which is excellent. The most, the fittest athlete in the UFC is Mursad Bektik, as Heather Linden said. The most um, well mobilized, the 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 least imbalanced. The, like of all all data, all data, Mursad Bektik is the, the healthiest, most fittest, most ath athletic athlete in the entire UFC, which is awesome. But on top of that, so his athleticism, yeah, that's great. Whatever, buddy. His room, he leaves his room completely. He leaves his room as if fairies flew into his room and 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 cleaned it, like 10 of them. The room was pristine. The beds were stripped and the, the sheets were stripped and washed already in the washing machine being run. Um, the towels that he had used were already washed and folded, stacked up perfectly as if the, the magic maids, fairy maids had done it themselves. Um, that's the way to be a house guest, ladies and gentlemen. That's the way to be a house guest. Just thought I'd add that a little behind the scenes. David, why in three weeks of shredded do people drink green tea and coffee in the same meal? Well, three cups of green tea consumed per day has shown a very favorable response to body fat loss. Also, the caffeine um, consumption of coffee and also some of the protective antioxidants inside coffee and some of the cofactors of caffeine have shown great thermogenic properties in different forms, even from slight appetite suppressant. So this is kind of a, a holistic cocktail of healthy for most options for all to add to their diet. Now, the last time I did three weeks straight, I didn't drink the green tea because I was drinking a little more coffee than scripted. Some people don't drink coffee or don't drink caffeine at all. They only drink non-caffeinated teas, and that is fine. So the coffee and the green tea, they help for those who well tolerate it under a doctor's supervision. Um, and they throw in that, that thermogenic property because on, tw on three weeks of shredded, we got 21 days. And a lot of people listening, they forget, or a lot of the people in the system, or a lot of people learn from the people who have been in the system. The, the, what we call them the, the, the niners. What's a niner? A niner, this is great. What is a niner? So we, on our on our intake forms, when we work with anybody, it's like a 75 question intake form. We want to learn everything about them, their life, their 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 family, their background, their job, their time they wake up, their medicines, their supplements. I mean, their bowel movements. Like we get pretty deep. 75 questions, a lot of questions. Some are, you know, multiple choice, and then some you got to you know, like add a little bit or you know whatever it is. And with that, we always have the question like, on a scale of one to ten. How motivated are you to commit to a lifestyle change? The people that say 10, 90% of the time are 10. There's the one person who lies. The people who say they are nine are 100% of the time a zero. Why is that? Because if I say, how committed are you to this goal? And you said, man, I am so committed. I, this, like, this is everything. I've been working so far, hard and I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I get it. I'm ready. I'm a nine. Wait, wait, wait. If you were so ready, if you were so committed to a, a truly lasting lifestyle change, you would be a 10, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I am, I am. But, you know, I got to go on that trip. And I, yeah, my kids, they get my fuck every Friday. My wife makes these, oh, shit, the matzo ball soup or whatever it is. And you're like, ah, motherfucker, you're not really committed to this shit at all. You're just trying to buy your way into some sort of mental scapegoat. You're buying the new shoes, but you never go run it. You got that treadmill sitting there, but you ain't put fucking four miles on that motherfucker. So we call these niners. So nine, are they a niner or are they a, a tenor? The tenor is someone who is, is truly, truly locked in. Um, I forget how I got onto that one. 
but that's that's all right. So I think you like the nine or ten of though. Green team called this, you know, training phase is hyper. So Vic says, hello, coach. What's your opinion on alternating a strength training phase to a hypertrophy phase or a hypertrophy phase? And how many reps do you think are ideal for hypertrophy? Thanks. Um, yeah, I like to change phases, change phases all the time. Um, you should be, I like three week runs. I like looking at everything in three week periods, even if that's two weeks of training and, and one week deload, but I like to construct things in three weeks, um, three weeks, three months, 12 months, you know, and then three years, you know, three years is really like, you know, where do we want to be? Where are we going? But we work with athletes who compete in the Olympics. So they're on four year periodized training cycles. And we obviously have little peaks and valleys and such built in there um, and we work with athletes who fight maybe six times a year some some you know like the crossfit competitors that we work with they got some pretty intense um early year competitive season where they just keep peaking 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 all the way through um and, and just different athletes endurance athletes and such so to answer your question yeah we want to have a, a big blend in there and what we try and do in many ways, and it, there's different styles of, of, of periodization, and I'm not going to get into all the styles right now. I probably will in a different video, different styles. What we found is to be well-rounded, your training system should be well-rounded, and you shouldn't really have any holes in your curriculum. You should be heading, hitting pretty much everything. It, you know, every five to 10 days, you should be hitting all energy systems, all muscle fiber types, all basic movements every five to 10 days uh, with slightly more specificity on, on, a, on a 48 to 72 hour cycle. So that being said, you can skew a little more towards strength, absolute strength, power, force production. You can skew a little bit more towards muscular endurance, different types of strength and, and energy use. Um, or you could skew a little bit more towards the cosmetic, which is the hypertrophy, which is typically um, the swelling of the muscle or the, the the thickening of the fiber is kind of the two basic ways. And that's done through different rep ranges. So to answer your question, I'll try and give some context. So hopefully some of you get this and understand at the deeper level. So I'm not just saying do this and walk away. Do, do this, do this. Three sets of eight to 12 repetitions and you'll be good, kid. Take, uh, take some of that fucking, you know, whatever. I won't say that. Um, so from a, a rep range or so, I mean, the 8 to 12s work pretty good for the hypertrophy. The higher you go up in the rep ranges, the, 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 the 12s to 15, the 10s to 15s or so, you're getting a little bit more into the volumization, the rounding of the muscles. And the lower you go, like the, the 4s to 6 to 8s, um, the, the 8s kind of be in the high end, you're getting more of that thicker, denser fiber. You want to have both actually to have that Dorian Yates esque type of, of, of physique. Um, then you see some of these other athletes, you're talking like a bodybuilder. It's a good visual. They just have these really round kind of Michelin man balloonish. They're typically the higher rep, um, trainees. And that's not because they're weak. Cause some of them, you know, fucking do like 15 rep sets with like three fifteen on the bench press, you know, but they would have to go like, you know, 450, 500 in order to get their fours and sixes in. That being said, you need to play in all those different rep types, you know, but three weeks, six weeks specificity cycles with that basic concept makes sense. I did a full YouTube video for those of you who care cause uh, the best program to build muscle. Um, and I believe I'm flexing the bicep of truth, of course, because you need to see that. Um, but watch that. It's like a 10 minute video. I break down a, a pretty solid uh, three day a week program. Christian, any thoughts on psychedelics? Many people in Silica Valley microdose them. I have also read articles of athletes doing likewise. I haven't, but I would love to test it out as long as it was legal and medicinally cleared and safe. So if there was a region that it was legal to do so and it was, you know, pharmaceutical quality um, components, compounds, and it was, you know, under the supervision of a, a doctor, let's say, getting the prescription or something like that, um, then I would, I would love to um explore that concept i haven't done a lot of, of deep research into psychedelics in my lifetime in different you know capacities uh, but i'm aware of the anecdotal evidence and experiences of many people that do and i believe their anecdotal experiences certainly do lend the population to see that there is elements of truth in that so that being said i cannot personally speak to what those exact truths are but I can say that the concept of, well, it's, it's hard because, you know, people can maybe take the, the term psychedelic a little deeper. So I'm not going to comment on a public platform too deeply on it, but it's interesting nonetheless. 
you know, and there's prescription drugs that offer similar benefits to just like zonking humans out, shifting them out of this plane, this space, this agreed upon reality and, and push them into another for a few hours. And there's, you know, pills that are, that's the plan. That's what they're supposed to do. Or even, you know, injections in the hospital, but you see it happen. So it's interesting. Uh, but I see a lot of the uh, intelligentsia are doing it now. I don't know if it's because it's cool and they're just doing what everybody else is doing to be cool, um, like wearing those fucking skinny jeans, um, or is it because there's something deeper to it? But everything I know about microdosing psilocybin is from Diane Lockhart on The Good Fight, which is one of the guilty pleasures in the Dolce household. Um, so you know, we, we burn up a, a few hours per year binge watching those series when they're done. Gary Bonner, someone is getting blocked. Yeah, he's blocked. Christian, do you do jujitsu at all? I used to. I've frozen my jujitsu training uh, for quite a few years now, but I'm very excited to get back in the game, get back after it. And uh, that's just to old guy jujitsu, as we call it. That's what I'm looking forward to, putting the gi on and just just rolling, not having to be like, oh, you know, can you help me get ready for my next fight? Like, oh, dude, <sighs> go get the 26-year-old. That's what they were there for. Um, I think you need to send Master Ken after these trolls. I know, I know. Haters on again. Yep, we love the haters. They're fine. Um, Paul, uh, Paul, Paul, Paul. Ha, ha, what's up, Paul? Sees uh, the day you're wasting time. David, what's up? Little heads are wildfire. Oh, cool. A's 2X, what's up? Gonna, I got to jump off here soon, guys and girls, so I'm going to try and run through these questions. I apologize for talking fast, but let me see if I can get to everybody. All right, ready, set, Go, Gary Bonner, what are your experiences with can Canada? Uh, leaky gut. I'm discovering I have an issue with this and I'm having some allergic reactions. Um, Gary, I would suggest you speak with our lead dietitian, Meg Forty, uh, who is a registered dietitian, has all the, the credentials behind her to have this deeper conversation with you. She has studied this extensively and I would call her and consider her to be an expert in the field. Um, so if you do have digestive issues, anybody out there, for whatever reason, I would strongly suggest you set up at least a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Meg specifically um, and speak directly to her and we can set that up you request mag or we understand what your issue issue is you're the one that you'll be sent to anyway so we'll send you to whoever you need to talk to based upon their title and their experience base Meg, Meg crushes it um that that would be my suggestion so i don't like to give out you know any specifics um on those who have medical conditions um or even the, the possibility of because you need to be under your doctor's care and work with a licensed practitioner don't mess around with that. Do not mess around with that. It's, it's like knee injuries. You need, don't say, hey, Mike, I, I think I tore my knee. What do you think I should do to fix it? Hell, bro. You need to go and get your MRI. You need to go to an orthopedist. You need to go to a physical therapist. You need to rebuild that with a hands-on practitioner. Um, Anthony, how much coffee should I drink a day? It depends on what you tolerate. You know, I'm at my upper limit right now for sure, but I've, been, I've spread mine since, uh, you know, I'm like eight hours now since I started drinking coffee and I'm almost done. So it's been like two shots every you know, three, four hours, three hours or so. Um, but for you, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe zero, maybe more. Gary, in the food industry, a roasted nut is fried in oil versus dry roasted nut is just that dry roasted. Yeah, you know, I, I've never actually done personal research into that. I never really thought about the topic. Uh, interesting, though. I appreciate that, Gary. Thank you. Johan, many blessings for you, for all you and your team. Uh, that you do for the common man and gal. I get it. Oh, Johan, thank you. I appreciate that. We are here to help you. All you, all you, all yous, all yous peoples, all yous regular peoples. Uh, that's what we're here for. Come on. I get to work with the world's greatest athletes every single day. I get to work with leaders of industry, absolute titans in the world, in the field. Some of the most credentialed, the famous, the most beautiful, the most successful, the most award given um, celebrity personality, athletes, whatever. Who, you know, we work with them. And then I, I get to give all that information to you guys as far as not who they are, because I rarely even talk about who they are. You probably know a couple of the athletes we work with, but you don't know. I never talk about the behind the scenes of who we work with. But you see me and some of you see me and many of you know, of course, you see me pop up here and there. But the algorithm, the IP, the intellectual property. What actually works? What are these people doing? What are the what is the 20 million dollar Hollywood star doing to truly look like that? What are they really doing to look like that? And there's there's different levels of severity that they will go. Some, it's, they just go to their doctor. They just go to their doctor and, you know, they, they hire a personal trainer and, you know, they do some hills, some run in the Hollywood Hills. And shit, they've added 40 pounds of lean muscle mass and got leaner. 
wow, that's it. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's not exactly what we do. That's not what we do. We get in for much more of a, a lifestyle, a lifestyle, lifestyle, changing energy, mood, ability, cognitive output performance. We're focused more on the athletic, physical, cognitive performance, which I think is why we, we've been so you know, successful at that level. It also allows us much more metrics. So it's not just, all right, what's your body fat? Get in the DEXA scan. There we go. It's not that metrics. We have all that, but that's the least of it. It's the performance metrics, the lifestyle metrics. That's what matter. So when I talk to you guys, I talk about that stuff, not the bullshit macro 40, 40, 20 or whatever bonehead program. That's, that's so blue belt, man. That's so, so fucking entry, entry level, truly. What I try and share with you guys, those who stay here long enough, is, is the black belt stuff, the high level stuff, the stuff that they're not even talking about in colleges yet. They don't even know what's happening yet, but we're already six months past it. That's the stuff that I try and share with you guys in a very easy to access and actionable way. And that's just through my conversation. That's just me talking to you guys and answering your questions and seeing what's out there. Um, thanks, coach, from your favorite ectomorph. Boom, Alia, I appreciate that. So happy I found you live. Too bad I'm so late. Dopey, no worries. You're here and I answered your question or not question. I commented on your comments, uh, but welcome. And then just go back and, and re-listen to it because I think I think the beginning of this was actually really good uh, on why it's bad to eat real food. You can't eat real food. That's crazy. You could think. Keep up the great work. Enjoy the perspective you give to a healthy eating. Hell yeah. Attorney, I appreciate that. Attorney Ron Fat Anthony. Also, is list with a weighted pack going to ruin the effect of list card? Yep. Nope. Just, just walk. Just do. What the science and reasoning behind the breakfast bowl and its ingredients. That is much deeper, a much deeper conversation. Uh, the breakfast bowl is jam-packed with everything you need to start your day, specifically after being fasted, because you've been fasted for 8, 10, 12, or more hours before that breakfast bowl drips into your system. But it has everything you need. It has a day's worth of energy. If that's the the only meal you eat, you are well fueled and nourished at a micro and macro level. Because what does the breakfast contain? It contains steel cut oats or oat bran or rolled oats or some form of oat product, some high fiber, high net fiber, low net carbohydrate, but still dense, healthy carbohydrate, complex carbohydrate. Typically, it's a cup of some sort of fresh fruit, fresh berries, even better, micronutrient, phytonutrient, life-giving, fresh fruit as a part of your meal, plus fiber, my goodness, high five, seeds, typically two to three different types of seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds mixed in. We always suggest raw, organic, local honey for many, many, many digestive reasons, many allergy reasons, breathing, respiration reasons, just general, you know, general overall health. Um, cinnamon, I mean, has many positive health benefits, specifically with those who have you know, blood sugar concerns or have carb sensitivities. Um, coconut, sometimes coconut flakes, almond butter. So now we have nuts, almond or peanut butter. So this meal in itself, hopefully by me giving you the ingredients, gives you the science behind it. It's the most perfect meal and it's delicious. We have people who go to bed early so they can wake up and eat their breakfast bowl because they can't wait to get to their breakfast bowl. Um, there's other meals, of course, but the breakfast bowl is quite honestly the perfect, perfect meal. Kale Sims, Mike, what kind of water do you drink? Mineral tap spring, et cetera. And what do you think about distilled water? So I, I get come of some of the higher end foo-foo bottled waters. Um, I even like the black and red one, I forget, or the smart water. Whole Foods has a pretty good one. Um, I think the Whole Foods 365 actually has a very highly rated um, water, and it is similar to the smart water. So it's distilled water with the electrolytes put back in. Um, also, Nestle Pure, I believe, has a very highly rated purified water. So we have those, but we also have filtration machines in our house and bathrooms and office here at the facility so you know when we do tap water it's through the the the, the multiple filters um now i was so crazy at one point i was i was automating the filtration system and then we would filter the water into a berkey and then have it double filtered again um because we were using las vegas water which isn't primarily the best um, so I've since eased up on that a little bit, but we go for the higher label purifieds because uh, it lost because the water coming out of the pipes in Vegas is pretty fucking nasty, even when you are super filtering it. So, you know, pay a little bit more for us. And I don't like to do that, but we do it. And I do understand that the, uh, you know, I don't like drinking from plastic bottles. So usually when we do drink them, we pour them into glass, you know, just so you don't have that lip to plastic contact for the most part. Um, so we do our best to mitigate, mitigate risk. What to do if you can't have caffeine? Makes me tired. Works the opposite way. Don't, don't take it. 
have a look for nice non caffeinated like a peppermint tea, a chamomile tea, lavender tea, um, even a dandelion tea that, that has very solid anti or very solid diuretic effects, um, all natural. I know your friend of Stan Everding, he gives you some props also. What do you think of his vertical diet and performance? Uh, Stan's the man, you know, Stan and I, we certainly don't agree on, on many things, I'd say. Uh, there's many things that we agree on. I think we always agree on principle. We always agree on the universal laws, but the individual application is always filtered through our lenses, the, the, the way where we're standing and, and who we're looking at in the field of performance. Um, Uh-oh, Brandy's calling. Hello, Brandy, I'm podcasting. Of course, uh, yeah, I'll be uh, like 10 minutes because we're almost done. We're wrapping. All right, well, bye. What's the rule, everybody? What's the rule? When the wife calls, you stop what you're doing and you answer. You answer. You're in the middle of a podcast in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Sorry, guys. Time out. Hello. Hello, honey. Um, that's a pro move right there. Pro tip. Pro rule. Everybody, hopefully you get it. Anyway, back to trying to answer these questions. And I think I got Stan Efferding. Yep. So, so Stan's awesome. Um, and I'd love to learn. I don't know enough about his vertical diet. Truly. I think I have an idea because when he first came on my podcast three years or so ago, he's with Flex Wheeler and they talked about how Stan, how Flex fed Stan for Stan's um, professional debut. It might've been, or to win his IFBB pro card. He worked with Flex Wheeler and they talked about his nutrition, which was insane. It was just eating like, like four ounces of steak and like four ounces of chicken and half a cup of rice eight times a day. And then after like a week, it'd be like six ounces of steak and, and uh, three quarters of a cup of rice. And it just like slowly increased it and increased it and increased it. I think he was eating like like 12 ounces of steak like 12 times a day or some crazy. There's some crazy thing like that. I think he's since softened it for the general practical use. Um, but I would love to have a deep conversation. And we'll get that set up here soon. I've been traveling a lot. He's been traveling a lot. Um, is it okay to swap out one serving of green tea later in the day for chamomile tea? Absolutely, Russ. Pete Feel, what's the black pack? The black pack. The black pack, the black pack. I'm not going to open it now. I got to get off. I got to get out of here. It is at dolce.shop.com. It, it has a built-in hot cold compartment with four snap top Tupperwares given to you, dolce.tupperwares. Uh, you can put all your meals in there. I put four meals in there when I travel. It's a three-day bag, essentially holds three days worth of, worth of gear. 13-inch MacBook Pro, 11-inch MacBook Air, plus your iPads, plus your hard drives, plus your electronics, plus your contraband plus all your eyeglasses, plus like, um, you know, shoes. It holds up to like a, a size 14 shoe that, that, that's very sleek and aerated and antimicrobial. The black pack is the most amazing backpack. I had 21 different backpacks that I used in the creation of, of disappointments before I finally um, called Adam Ross at XD Fitness and said, I need to make my own backpack. We're going to call it the black pack and it's going to have all this stuff because i went through 21 different bags and this one was awesome but fuck if the latch was only here this one is perfectly great but it doesn't slide onto my suit or this one is awesome but the the tub i can't get my hand into this stupid food tub this fucking backpack so i went through all that that's why the black pack is awesome um desiree what's up coach i love all the recipes in the living link cookbook thank you mike you got it desiree hot dog what's your example of overtraining in terms of sessions per day depends on the individual i can over i can overtrain in three sessions a week at my stage and i think the amount of intensity that i can actually generate david i think you have been drinking both green and tea coffee for years i was psyched about it thank you i have been drinking both green and green tea and coffee for years hell yeah david you got it me too the Michael, I'm 6'3", weigh 152 and put on muscle mass. And even though I'm trying to put on muscle mass, I do BJJ four days a week, as well as kettlebells and push-ups, pull-ups, and all that stuff. Anything would be great with Petra. Michael, you want to add weight? You got to stop your jujitsu. Um, you got to stop your kettlebells. You got to stop all your push-ups, pull-ups. You got to stop all that stuff. If you want to put on muscle, if you want to put on muscle, you got to give yourself six weeks. Just step off that stuff. Maybe you go to the Sunday open roll just to keep your jits game there a little bit. For real, you got to stop. If you want to gain, if gaining muscle becomes your goal, fine. But if it's like getting a little stronger and gaining a little muscle while doing all the other stuff, well, you can do that too. But I would say take six week uh, squats and steak, man. Once squats and steaks comes out, just get squats and steak. It's a 12 week program, how to add 20 pounds of muscle and gain 200 pounds on your squat in 12 weeks, squats and steak. I have to finish that for you guys. Um, I'll get that done. It's, it's all format. It's just me being a little bit of lazy on the, uh, the, the final publishing side, just transparency, right? That's the truth. Uh, I just haven't gone through the full reads and the last little edits and notes and, and, and all that stuff. So I'll have to, I'll do that for you guys. Um, but that's what you should do until then. Just go listen to the best program to build muscle on my YouTube channel. And I break you down a great program.
Uh, bum, 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 bum. Dopey, no worries. Thanks for doing this. Absolutely, Christian. Real quick, DC versus St- Stipe. I have no idea. Never pick fights because it's both. They're both bad dudes. Max Field. Hey, Mike, what is a non meat alternative to the classic white rice, chicken breast, broccoli meal per day? I'd say chickpeas. Chickpeas are a great addition in that meal. Chick- black beans, even, um, maybe even mixed beans, but I like chickpeas. Nice and simple. Um, but, but, um, what do you do? Mike, do you recommend the walk every single morning? You know, three out of seven days per week for sure. Humans were made to walk. We are bipedal organisms. We were made to walk moderate distances at low to moderate pace. I mean, really low pace because we don't run at our, our fastest is, is very slow as far as land animals go. Our fastest sprint is very slow and we can't get very far. Right. So we can. There's many things that run faster than us <laughs> that will take us down before we get to our distance for sure. There's few things that will go as far as us, can go as far as us um, in relatively shorter periods of time at relatively slower paces, though. That's what humans were just designed. We're designed to walk, walk far. Like that's what humans do. Oh, oh. Um, that's what humans are made to do at our best. So I think walking an hour a day is really, you know, us living a life that is more in line with the actual design of our species. And I think that's important. I don't care what your body booty goals are or your sport performance, just to be a human, just to be a human, you got to walk, you know, a couple hours a week, an hour at a time, straight shot. Yeah. You know, going on, I'd love, I love when people go on long hikes or you go to a new city, go walk, spend all day walking the city. You don't need an Uber. Oh my God. It's like two miles from there to there. Yeah. Go and fucking window shop all two miles up and take the long way back. That's the way it should be. Um, bu- 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 uh, Kaloi, oh, FYI, your volume's a bit low. Well, now you tell me. 56 minutes in. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you. I'll look. I'll look when I get back to it. Mike, do you recommend walk? Answer that. Lifestyle for sure. Turn 37 and feel amazing. Desiree, you're crushing it. Good for you. Anthony, you got it. Breakfast Bowl's fucking amazing. A2X Gamer says... Pedro, does low intensity cardio gas you out a little bit if you have a workout later in the day? Nope, not at all. Different energy system completely. And as soon as you go home, you hit that breakfast bowl, you're ready to roll. In fact, you will and should be better. Now, if you're you walk zero miles, you know, for your 40 years, then you go and walk four. Yeah, you're gonna be a little fucked up. So I'd say just day one, go walk five minutes. Walk five minutes farther today than you did yesterday. How's that sound? And slowly build and scale. Um, best part of a Dolce diet is setting five daily goals and accomplishing five daily goals, fitness, family, finance, future, and for me, right? The five goals that we set fitness, family, finance, future, for me, the five goals that we set every day and we accomplish every day before we go to bed, hit a plateau after months of successful intermittent fasting combined with weights and cardio frequently. How should I change it up and shock the body shots, shouts from Ireland, Luke, go to the Dolce diet.com. I mean, that, that's the way to go. Um, and you can even on, on Amazon, man, on Amazon, you can download one of our books on Kindle right now. On right now on Kindle, download one of our books. Get more of an ordered eating pattern. I get it. Intermittent fasting, you will hit a wall because you can't reduce your calories any farther. Intermittent fasting, for the most part, most people, it becomes calorie deprivation. You only allow yourself to eat so many calories during a certain period of time, and your body adapts rapidly initially, and then you hit that plateau plateau phase. How do you break that plateau phase? Well, you can't eat any less, right? You can't exclude because if you're a keto carnivore style, then you can't exclude any more food groups. So now what? Fuck, fuck. Now what? I can't train any harder because shit. Who can? So that this is where those those type of you know exclusionary programs they fail. They fail you instead of having an ordered program like we tend to suggest. You know, that's what the Dolce diet is. We're eating real food in wide variety throughout the day, all day long, every two to four hours based upon activity. We're feeding our body for our ex- anticipated expenditure and we're refueling we're replacing the 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 burnt um and and used raw materials from whatever we had just done so that's the way we look at it so check out our stuff man Uh, go to the dolce diet.com check it out thanks for helping having me always listen to the podcast first hell yeah um jake uh mike any advice for my kidneys their function at 50 two percent brother you got to go to the doctor I can give you zero information on that, my friend. Go to your doctor, talk to your doctor, and then you can speak with one of our registered dietitians who would be happy to work with you um, under your doctor's care and supervision, my man. But of course, I'm assuming you are, but just making sure you are. And then let me know. Let me know. We'll go from there. Um, A2X Gamer, have a good day, Mike. You are the man. I-
and for my my amazing podcast community what's up everybody um as you know 